sacred uh, bulls, African sacred bulls, with names like Mukonondega, Mutekwa, Chipandu, Dablilije. What does all this uh, mean and uh, why? Is it applicable in our lives today? How is it correct? How can it be wrong? Why does the Bible condemn it? Let us look at this uh, and find out a number of factors here. It is clear that uh, the origins of cattle is Africa. There are no other explanations because Africa is the source. Prevailing theorists may say domestic cattle or the bovine came from some other place in Western Asia or Near East. I want to say that there was no Near East. There is no Near East. Middle East is Africa. Western Asia, India is Africa. So the evidence of scholars like Decker ETC in 2014 and many others assume and work on a very wrong political platform because it is clear as we can see from these images that from asian central africa right up into kemet right up into east asia the cattle the cow the bovine was already there and also it features in our ancient belief system this is why we are looking at it also the popular sport of bullfighting and matador popular with spanish and portuguese descendants was copied and stolen from ancient Africa. The images are clear, which I am showing here, found in the walls of ancient Africa uh, by Africans in ancient Egypt. So this is clear. We have cleared the origin of uh, the cattle is Africa, or the cattle sport, or the cattle fights, or the bull fights, the bull run, including one which is commercial. They all originated in ancient Africa. There we are. We are seeing the bull, the big bull. Is this tradition pagan? When did it start and why? Why is it condemned by other religions like uh, Christianity? We know that it was all created in Africa. You see the bull run? Uh, these are the idols still being worshipped by other people today. They worship idols. Africans do not worship idols. This is what I want to show and the distinction that I want uh, to demonstrate. This is in Canaan 1002, 1300 years ago. Of course, this is an image crafted by uh, Euro Gentiles. And this is what you call Wall Street a bull run in 2000 almost or now today but this is the masters of cattle cows with African animals it's the Dinka absorb this this is all Maasai the Matebele the Nguni the Zulus the Shonas in West Africa Akan the Dravidians in India every Africoid people had something and have something powerfully connected to the bull to the cow to the cattle. The, the, the image speaks a volumes. So why did they say golden calf instead of golden bull? Why is it not a bull? Illustrating that it is a child, a derivative of the real thing. What is the real thing? The real deal is the original, the father, the bull. So in Exodus 32 verse 5, the golden calf incident, when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. There it is. It's a golden calf. So it's gold and calves a bull run. They call it idolatry. The Jews, the Christians want to call it idolatry. But they worship a Jesus who hanged on the cross and shed blood. And they think that Jesus hanging on the cross is not, uh, is not idolatry. But this bull worship is idolatry. What a travesty of thinking. Bantu of ancient Egypt had this bull and they understood all this. So uh, scholars like Herbert Aswanden noted the significance of the bull among the Karanga, the Bantu Bantus in Southern Africa. Another symbol of the ancestor is the bull or Gono. Therein the ancestor is honored as the provider of the family because of the bull's generative power to procreate and also to defend and also to make the various calls that the bull uh, makes. The cattle obtained a are uh, acquired, are uh, used to acquire more women to pay lobola or bride price. The Gono is regarded as protector of its people. Gono in ancient Egypt, it was known as Apis. He was the god of agriculture and fertility. Same with Bantus. He was a funeral god too. Same with Bantus. He was an Egyptian name of Hapri or Hepu. Same with Africans. I've already given you the names. This is the proof 
that bandus in southern africa and other parts of africa are the direct descendants of ancient egypt they are direct descendants of ancient ethiopians and the hebrews they founded and we founded those empires and all other civilizations scattered all over the earth i want to encourage uh, you to also find this book uh, treatise on maati by dimbo bari ambog a fantastic uh, book that explains and goes in detail of the connection between Bantu languages and ancient hieroglyphics and ancient Ethiopic languages vis-a-vis -vis these symbols we are talking about, like the bull that I have started to explain. It all was recorded in our last our fort, our last empire. This is the modern cow in Africa. You look at the horns and you look, this is the ancient cow almost 3,000 or so years ago. You look at it, you look at the colors there, it's the same color, the black cow, the African there guiding them and guiding them. You have seen the African dingas, the same right inside the head. It's also prophetic because we, we find ourselves being driven towards the bull, like a political movement, one of the most powerful liberating movements in Africa, Zimbabwe, African People's Union, ZAP, founded by the late Dr. Joshua Nkomo, had the bull as the symbol. And they had the power, the inspiration, the prophetic idea and ideology to say power to the people. This is the truth. I wish we could have this today as the Chinese have continued to bribe African leaders by building parliaments. And, 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 and African leaders think this is good, but they don't see that they are being bribed and being cowed and being cornered. Plutarchy folks are the Bull Munevis and Apis. Osiris, the, our ancient ancestor, the greatest divine ancestor on the one hand, according to the legendary tradition, was dark or black or African. The Bull kept in Heliopolis, which they call Munevis, and which is sacred to Osiris, some hold it to be the sire of Apis is black and his owners second only to Apis. We are not dealing with the calves here. We are dealing with a bull. We deem it wise to remind that the Langi Nzihiku means bull. Nkos. Communion by hosting ill or spirit in a black bull is an African tradition. The ox of the ancestor or Inkomoyama Nkos represent that energy vortex point in a tribe or in a nation. Based on what Herodotus indicated, the ancient Egyptians Africans believed that the cow which gave birth to Apis had been fertilized by a ray of light. According to Plutarch, Apis had been generated by a moon, a beam. As for Diodorus, the Egyptians had the conviction that the o Osiris' soul or spirit of that ancestor had passed through the body of his bull and thereby remained with them, remained with our us in our presence. Based on the testimony of Strabo and Plutarch, Apis was dedicated to Osiris, the same thing that Africans are do, the same thing that you should do. The priest, Prutash, say, teach that Osiris and Apis are one and the same date, and that Apis should be considered as the perfect image of Osiris' soul. Mtekwa, Mkonondega, Dablamans, Dablisizwe, the names of the bulls that we should have, the names of the bulls that should also be amongst our nation. The bulls symbolized the fearless vigor, strength, and enduring fury. Bantus of ancient Egypt selected a black bull to represent the divine, the creator. Tiko They did not worship it, but revered it. In other words, activated it to release its power. This became a prevalent in the ancient world, copied across the whole earth. This is the ancestral symbol or ancestral trigger or ancestral reminder or switch it was all over in india where the bull or the cow is sacred up to today it also means as above so below he is activating the so as above and so as below among the most important symbols of ancient africa and ancient egypt procreators the bull could simultaneously evoke the god of creation the primordial waters and even the flood of the river nile or Haapki. This identification with the life energy made him a symbol of that Egyptian ruler and many of the new kingdom rulers were called mighty bull, inkuns, and or bull of Horesu. Also, so as above, so below. This is critical to understand because we are still in the age of the bull, so-called Taurus by the Greeks. 
the spring equinox of our era of our 25 of 26,000 year 6,500 years ago and so we are in the Taurus era today today we are still in the Taurus Aries and Pisces and the Pisces we have just finished Pisces the three quarter, these three segments and we are entering into Aquarius although we are into Aquarius it doesn't mean the bull power has diminished as our ancestors demonstrated here during Setis Atu's time the bull is still cosmic the stars are still there the equinox is still running the 13,000 years are just gone by we are starting another 13,000 years with difficult and the most powerful challenges which we have to rise to and I'm glad to pronounce that we are rising to the Chinese will be hit by what they don't know this is it our mothers rode the bull we should ride the bull our mothers ride the bull we should ride the bull this is Africoid and the, these are the details of Dendera a secular zodiac with Gemini between Cancer and Taurus so as above so below we still have to evoke all this which we need for power the same thing for us to invoke the creator we have to continue to drag in to suck in to pull to imbibe and to awake imni and zambi onyame the link between the bee another very critical animal and this great god can be seen with the duala name ndombi b a variant of the basa lombi ancient the lahad offers lombi blackness Lombo blackener and lomba to blacken, lomba to darken, ndombi color black forms that have led to the Mount Olympus in Greek to be named so. The Basa say Hilolombi meaning God, literally ancient of the day or ancient of the ancients or dominant ancient. So we need him. We cannot ignore. So the bull which activated him must be brought to us. The bee is called Yam or Yambe in Wolof, a variant of the common appellation Nyambe or God in Ethiopic African languages. The relationship between the bee and the great God is established with the Basa Nyoi B, the homonym of the word Nyoi to disappear from view, which means Amen, which is the essence inside the word Amen, Amen, abused and misused by the Greeks. So the point of our ancestors denoted their primary female cow date Hawati Heru are coming from the south and inner Africa meaning that the real spiritual powers are totemic and potentialized within ethnic groups in sub-Saharan Africa who maintain pastoral cultures and show reliant on cattle in the same way or same ways if not more than the ancient or more than what we are showing here if possible you should have a bull in your head or in your home this is why they were valued in the book of coming forth by day as evidenced in my hepulsi Hawad heru reverence also continue today with the taboos a food taboos like incense impundu for example is a segment of the liver that is eaten only by the male and female elders because it is said to promote forgetfulness if it is eaten by younger people. Nkamans from the lower lip which the cow uses to drink water. It is also eaten by senior men. Abu reverence is now condemned because it is the source of spiritual power. For Bantus it is condemned because it will reconnect and link and bind you to ancient Hamid. It will unite us. Therefore we have to adopt it. It is time we have a bull run ourselves and uh, this is Hamiti Hebrew ethics propagating uh, the real potential to recreate power to rulership and perfect time recapturing subscribe to our channel Hamiti Hebrew ethics uh, this is a rabbi LM Dumizulu this is our email LM Dumizulu at gmail.com contact us get in touch with us thank you goodbye